David, this is a product we're going to be using. This is the one you've invented? Yeah, well, there's two or three. There's This one is called the Blowflow Wrap because yep. it's wrapped around a drip line. This one's called Blowflow Flat. Because this is a flatter product, it's got a P layer on the bottom, oh. which stops the you know the original downward drainage of the, mm-hmm. the water. Inside the line here, we'll just uh, pull it apart a little okay. bit. Yeah, sure. You can see a dripper there. Yeah. Okay, this dripper here. That's a pressure compensating dripper. So what it does is it, it uh, compensates the amount of water that's coming out of each dripper, dripper. at a specific yeah. pressure. But what happens when the water comes out of that, hits this geotextile, runs through about uh, 10,000 times faster than a clay loam, then the soil absorbs it away. And compared to drip, standard drip, we, at the University of Western Sydney, we were wetting up to 300% more volume than drip. That's a, with, with less water than drip. With less water. That's right. So it's much more efficient. This one here is the wrap product, and it's also pressure compensating as well. And uh, on, a, on a site like this, which is sloping, it's a good one because it's got a diaphragm in this particular one that we've used in this job uh, that won't let it leak downhill. We yep. also have another one called Safety Flash, which has a mauve covering over the top. Yes. And that's what, what you can use for recycled or grey water. This is Dawes Point here. How long ago was this irrigation put in? Um, it was installed in around about November last year, around about New Year's Eve. We started actually using it. Right, so it got a pretty heavy trafficking yeah. straight after it was put in anyway. Sure did, yeah. yeah. Yep. But it survived. Yeah, it survived really well. We had overhead an overhead system um, which did the job quite well, mm. um, but coming in with the water restrictions, uh, yeah. obviously we weren't allowed to use it anymore, so um, we went searching for something um, a bit more um, versatile, something yeah. that we could actually use during the restrictions. Okay. So once we could see that the wrap would actually spread the water a lot further, um, it was sort of quite obvious that that it might actually work and we were at that desperate stage where we thought you know hey let's give something to go yeah we see. couldn't water otherwise how's it standing up to the traffic oh it's, it's excellent it's yeah. it's really worked for us this year especially this time of year there'd be no grass here we get busloads of um, tourists coming through the park yeah. walking straight across and it's stood up to the that sort of a hammering really well considering that we wouldn't have been able to water for the whole of winter and coming into this summer yeah where we've got a good grass cover now um, Spring's going to probably kick it right on. Yeah. And um, we've got water there. So it's, yeah. You know, we can water twice a week at the moment, so it's it's working out well for us. It's, it's really okay. good. We over a number of years have been maintaining the irrigation around here, and we yeah. found that the high use uh, in the area was wearing out the grass. The overhead spray, because of the compaction, the overhead sprays really weren't getting down to where it, uh, the water should be. Yeah. So therefore, it was the grass was just wearing yeah. and stressing very easily. Yep. Uh, because again of high use, you were limited on the amount of times you could overhead spray. Yeah. So uh, they came to us and looked for an alternative, mm-hmm. and with the product that you have developed, yeah. it was installed, and we found that that was an exceptional way of maintaining the grass here. Yeah. Buskers, uh, New Year's Eve, very high profile obviously, uh, a lot of people having lunch, um, it, it's just a very, very high use area. High traffic area also yeah. going to the rocks from the uh, the wharf and very high profile area too. I yeah. mean, there's only one Sydney Harbour. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and you know, we're right on it. It's got to be right. That's yeah, it's it. got to be right, yeah. I'd been researching irrigation systems for a while, yeah. you know, with the belief that um, standing there holding a hose is not only a waste of water but also a waste of your time. So I looked at the the various possibilities and um, then came upon the the KISS system and to me it just stood out as being so much more clever than than the other systems. Um, The fact that you're providing the water directly to the the roots which is exactly where it's needed so Mm. there's minimal chance for evaporative losses. The plants are thriving and, and doing well. I know that they're getting the right amount of water. So I'm just very aware of um, trying to do the right thing by the environment and minimise the um, amount of water that I need to use on basically what is a luxury, which is to have a garden. It's, it's so easy to use. I mean, it's really just a matter of turning on the tap and flicking on the timer for you know, the, the amount of time that I wanted to run. So it, it's a minimal effort on my part. This is the only playing field that we have for the 1,200 kids. It's virtually been used non-stop during the day. During the soccer season, over 17 weekends, it's used by the soccer club. This time of the year, virtually down the centre of the field, it gone to dirt. Water coming up from underneath yeah. encourages the roots to grow down and longer. Right. And with that, 
the uh, stuff that gets scuffed on the top, there's, the grass has still got a good root system to hang in there until the growing season comes along. The biggest benefit is probably to um, water whenever I want to without interrupting the uh, use of the playing field. The thing about the, um, the below flow system is that it's the, probably the only intelligent irrigation system that's available in the world mm. and the, way, the reason I say that is because it's the only system where the emission of water from the, the drip tape itself is controlled by the soil. The rate is dependent on the soil conditions so it, the system will release more in dry conditions than it does in wet soil. And so what this does, it, it allows the system to re remove uh, variation in soil moisture content. Mm. All other systems are simply emit water regardless of soil types. Now I would refer to those as sort of unintelligent systems. So this is one system which, is, which has its own intelligence. Once the soil um, which is pressing up against the geotextile becomes fully wet, mm. it no longer will take water from the system. Mm. And so the, the excess water will flow along the system until it finds another dry area of soil. Yeah. Now other systems are a bit like putting a hose onto the ground. Yeah. You point the hose into the ground, the water comes out at some predetermined rate mm. and does, it totally ignores the ability of the soil to accept that water. Right. So that's a key difference, isn't that it? That is a, a major difference with this system. The key to, to successfully keeping water uh, under the ground instead of having puddles of water on the surface is to make sure you match the amount of water you're putting into the soil with the ability of the soil to, ex to accept that water. And we try to, using these soil tests that I've developed, to, uh, to set up each site according to the specifics of the soil. This test is uh, specifically designed to find out how far apart the irrigation line should be, mm -hmm. but also how deep the installation should be in any particular soil. Yep. Now every soil is going to differ. Now the tests that we're doing currently aren't done by any other laboratory in the world, as far as I, I understand. Mm. It's a, it's a test that's been developed by, uh, by us for your company, for your product. Mm. And I think it's one of the things which will differentiate your product from others. This is uh, Mashman Park. It's on the site of the old Coromo uh, ceramic factory. This park itself is located on a concrete slab. Right. Beneath it, there's about a three story car park, two story mm. car park. So in effect, we've got a roof garden, mm -hmm. the same sort of situation, roof garden, completely artificial contained site. How do we irrigate it? Mm -hmm. It is so free draining, how do we irrigate it? Uh, we couldn't use sprinkler systems because of Sydney water restrictions. The, we looked at some of the existing drip systems. Um, I wasn't too happy with those because of such a, such a small point source of water distribution. And when uh, Brian Eyes from National Irrigation actually showed us your system, I thought, That'll work. It fitted with my idea of how water works through soil. It's almost like a, an underground wicking system. Yeah. You've got the water retaining in the geotech fabric. Yeah. Um, it's there for a longer period of time. And I thought it was, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Rob. Yeah, OK, Appreciate thank you.